Hello, my name's Michael Keneally, and this video is about the eclipse of the 16th of May. It's a full moon lunar eclipse at one degree Vedic Scorpio, Sun at one degree Vedic Taurus. The key note to this eclipse is to be aware that this eclipse is a threshold or a portal, a, a space to go through, an archway to go through and to see what is on your route ahead. For example, for the coming 18 months, now that the nodes of the moon have just changed sign, Ketu into Libra, Rahu into Aries. Now I actually mention about nine crucial um, features of this eclipse. But what I want first of all to say is that, for example, because of the fact that Saturn is square this eclipse, this is a setting of tense energies and possibly fearful energies. So it's important that each of us pace ourselves, obey Saturn's demands, ensure we are discharging our responsibilities, ensure we are tying up loose ends and unfinished business, focus, develop fearlessness and embody that virtue. Now the Eclipse is in Vishakha Nakshatra and Vishakha Nakshatra symbol is the triumphal arch, a triumph justly and properly achieved for which others will look up to one and gain benefit. And Vishakha Nakshatra is ruled by Jupiter so in the middle of quite a number of difficult energies, including tension and fear, remember to look up to Brihaspati, the divine face of Jupiter, to receive blessing, sense of purpose and guru connection. In fact, Jupiter is casting a benefic ninth house aspect on this eclipse. Jupiter, the ruler of Vishaka, the nakshatra in which this eclipse falls. Now, obviously, it's important to be aware of the house in your birth chart that this eclipse activates, Scorpio Taurus, and there's a housing, sorry, a house summary at the end of the blog associated with this, this eclipse. Each house is a sort of life area. And it's crucial to be aware of any planet in your birth chart that this eclipse conjuncts or aspects. I'll be saying a bit more about that. So actually, out of difficult eclipse energy, and a difficult tense time and Mercury retrograde, um, if we are forewarned and informed, and I'm giving you nine facets of the energy of this eclipse in a moment, then we can achieve entry through a triumphal portal. We can see a successful route ahead spanning, say, 18 months. So just to mention, for example, the importance of checking out what planets in your birth chart are activated by this eclipse, well, absolutely contact me for a reading. But to give you an example of the sort of thing you can be looking at, well, this eclipse actually conjuncts my Chiron at one Scorpio, which is conjunct my Mars. And the fascinating thing is that on the 9th of November, 
I had a, a coronavirus injection and since then I've had really bad symptoms of pericarditis, inflammation around the heart and the head, uh, very typical because K2 was going across my Chiron Mars at that point. But my belief and hope is that this por uh, a portal eclipse will actually create and show me a route forward out of those illness symptoms, you know, reactions to the coronavirus injection, towards, a, 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 I sincerely think, a successful life pathway with a lot of inspiration and blessing. So this eclipse conjuncts my Chiron, um, but Saturn, which as I've said, is actually square the Sun and Moon of this eclipse, also therefore square my Chiron. Serious times, karmic times. Uranus of this eclipse is square my Pluto. Revolution in the expression of power. Neptune is square my Jupiter. Loads of inspiration coming through. Pluto squares my Mercury, coming more into my voice. And just I'm just trying to sort of prompt you what you can see in Eclipse by going through my Eclipse planets. Note that the nodes of the Moon have changed sign. So that K2 is now in my fourth house where I have several planets and I have to really watch that energy. And Rahu is in my tenth house of career. So check out what this eclipse is doing to your planets and your houses and get a reading from me. I guarantee you a very carefully prepared, well-researched, empowering reading. So I expect personally a demanding activation of the healing process needed for my existential wound, Chiron, and yet career and relationship success. I say relationship because K2 in Libra and K2 in Libra can be tough for relationships. But if we know that, we can bring out the highest spiritual nature of our relationship, sharing together to heal it. So what will it mean for you? Get a reading if, for me. So I'm now going to list the nine crucial things to beware about in this eclipse. And then there's a part two video where I suggest a possible vision work outline that you can do just before, at the time of, and in the following days of this eclipse. So what are the nine crucial things? Well, first of all, Moon is in Scorpio. The Moon is at its most debilitated in the sign of Vedic Scorpio. Frustrated, unhappy, etc. This will affect our consciousness. Second point. Saturn is square, this full Moon eclipse. Saturn at naught degree Aquarius. Be aware of the sort of things this means in your consciousness, in your life. Delay, enforced demands, responsibilities, enforced completions of un unfinished business, enforced dotting the I's and crossing the T's of what you do. Saturn's implacable demand for hard work and determination, which can lead to golden reaping. Saturn originally is an agricultural deity. And be careful of a surrounding energy of fear, bitterness or self-pity. Also be aware, thirdly, that the sun of this full moon eclipse is conjunct the dreadful fixed star Algol the severed head of Medusa. Keep your head at the time of this eclipse, the run up, the moment of the eclipse and afterwards. Don't get frazzled by the sharp, awful energies that are there as well as the wonderful opportunities. Fourthly, 
This eclipse occurs at a tense time of change because it comes just after the shift of the nodes of the Moon into the new sign axis, the Aries Libra sign axis that occurred on the 12th of April. Fifthly, tension is actually further increased because a load of planets have just changed sign or turned retrograde. Mars entered Vedic Aquarius on the 7th of April. The nodes changed sign on the 12th of April. Jupiter transited into Pisces on the 13th of April. Neptune transited into Pisces on the 18th of April. Venus transited into Pisces on the 27th of April. Saturn entered Aquarius for a brief stay before a retrograde on the 29th of April. Pluto turned retrograde on the 30th of April and Mercury turned retrograde on the 10th of May. An important point to be aware of also is that in this eclipse, Venus is conjunct Chiron exact. And so that can bring out events and feelings and interactions that can show us where our relating patterns are in some way wounded, but with the divine purpose and the divine possibility of actually working together on them and getting better healing, jacking up our relationship to a higher spiritual level. Seventhly, Mars is conjunct Neptune. So positively, that is working for vision and insight breakthrough. But beware the negative potential in Mars conjunct Neptune, delusion stuff energy. Eighthly, just note that this eclipse falls in actually a place of stagnant energy, which it will activate, left by the eclipse of the 19th of November 2021 last year, when the Moon was at 3 Taurus and the Sun at 3 Scorpio. Um, and the energy patch left by this eclipse around the 1st of August upcoming, not so far away, will actually see Mars, Rahu and Uranus all gather together at 24 degrees Aries. Watch out for that time. Use this eclipse as a portal of awareness. See your strong spiritual path ahead so as to be prepared for the violent energies of Mars Rahu Uranus around the 1st of August, not so far away. Ninthly, just note that the truth is this is actually an eclipse with divisive Kalsapa Yoga energy. Kalsapa Yoga means all planets to one side of the nodal axis. Now, in fact, Sun and retrograde Mercury are just over the axis of the Kalsapa, but that does not, in this case, make it any less tense because Sun is conjunct Rahu with retrograde Mercury. So I hope this brief resume of the nature of the difficult energy of the eclipse and the fact that it can actually be a portal to go through for success and healing and to identify at this stage your strategy for the coming 18 months, your successful pathway ahead for the coming 18 months. Get a reading from me if you want help on this. And I'm actually now just about to film part two, my suggested vision work outline for this 16th of May eclipse. Thank you.